There are many, many species of native bees and wasps and flies. The house fly is only one of hundreds. Honeybees only one of hundreds. And wasps too, there's hundreds of species of wasps. If you have a pollinator garden or you look carefully at any blooming plant, you'll see there are all kinds of insects buzzing around them. We are at the Cherokee Lake Pollinator Garden in Thomasville. Here, citizen scientists are helping to paint a picture of pollinator health in the state of Georgia. This is the first ever Georgia pollinator census. It's called the Great Georgia Pollinator Census, and it was started by the University of Georgia, and people are counting pollinators all over the state for science. So what are you, what are you guys like marking down specifically when you see each plant? Um, just like how many butterflies we see, uh, mm -hmm. whatever sort of insects or animals that we see crawling around the tree or l making a habitat out of the plant, then that's usually what we uh, record. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so far we've seen a lot of butterfly crystallis, a lot of caterpillars. Lots of ants. Mm -hmm. Staying out here today we've seen some really cool praying mantis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of action with them. It's really amazing how little so many people know about anything in nature. So citizen science gets people out in nature. So for this census today people have learned about pollinators and learned about the groups of pollinators. Pollinators include butterflies and moths but also carpenter bees, bumblebees, honeybees, small bees, wasps, flies, and other insects like beetles. Beetles are a, a pretty common pollinator. Pollinators need more than just flowers. Each butterfly can only lay its eggs on specific plants. Probably the one that people know the most is monarchs. Monarchs uh, will not lay their eggs on any plants except milkweeds. There is nothing as pretty as a monarch chrysalis. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It has golden, shiny, metallic looking dots across the top of it. It is so beautiful. Some of the host plants are non-native. For instance, the giant swallowtail, which is our largest butterfly, uh, its native host plant is a hop tree. This one's different. But they also can use any kind of citrus plant. And so if you have a lime or orange or satsuma or anything like that, and you see a caterpillar on it that looks like bird poop, that's the giant swallowtail caterpillar. Really beautiful butterfly. Right here, this vine, you see this vine with these big leaves right here? That's a passion vine, and that's their fruit. And it's, it's edible. And have y'all ever heard of May Pops? Down here in the south, um, kids kids would take the balls and hit them, hit each other with them, and they would pop. This is the larval food of the Gulf fritillary butterfly. Fan petals are a weed that will grow easily in your yard, and they host checkered skipper butterflies. I saw this one appearing to lay an egg on a flower bud in my yard. Then, during the pollinator census, I saw this happen on a fan petal. Some people may get upset when they, they see their caterpillars getting eaten, but that's all part of the web of life. Another thing that you'll see when you start a, a pollinator garden is the predator. I'm 70 years old, and um, I won't be around a whole lot longer, but um, we need so much for younger generations to get involved with these kinds of things. But I want to encourage everybody to plant natives and to get involved with any kind of nature activity you can, like Audubon and Florida Trails and Florida Native Plant Society, and uh, for Georgians, Georgia Native Plant Society, Georgia Botanical Society. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.